memory about your dad? He smiled a lot. He was big. He was big. He was strong. And even when he got older, he still had his sense of humor. Um, I enjoyed him very much, and I miss him a lot. I'm going to ask a few more people <laughs> for memories about their dads. Of course, I was, you know, knew, I knew her dad uh, from the time I was 17 when I started hanging out at her house. I know you saved your dad from a bull one time, but what about the character of your dad? What kind of things you might say? My dad was, uh, of course, I didn't know him too well when I was born, you know. <laughs> but he was really, uh, he was a special guy. He, he, had, he was a workaholic. He would work day and night. He didn't, it didn't matter to him, you know. So when we were young, we didn't see him a whole lot until we got to grade level. And uh, then he was really watching over us closer. And uh, he was quite a guy. And he had that sense of humor that uh, some people liked it, some people did. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, one of the biggest things is my dad didn't get saved till he was uh, 46. He only lived to be 58. So it was a short run for him. But his heart was changed instantly at 46. He was sold out to God. And he was concerned about every one of his kids. Not only them, but he was concerned for his dad, his mother, his brothers, his sisters, that most of them weren't safe. So uh, he showed a lot of compassion and love. You know, I can remember the days being tough when there wasn't a whole lot. You know, money was tough when we were kids. What you got had a need for it. But it come Christmas time, he always had it covered. Uh, as we got older, I think the thing that I enjoyed so much was he was there for us. You know, uh, we got married, we lived right next to him. <laughs> uh, he provided that for us. Uh, he's the one that liked the cattle and the hogs, you know, so we stayed in it. <laughs> uh, and as the years went on, he became, he was hit uh, pretty young with uh, heart, with stroke and then the heart attack. And uh, so he was left laid up quite a bit. But uh, I remember stopping in to see him after work on certain times. And uh, as soon as I walk in the door, he'd be smiling. I'd say, hiya, buddy. Hadn't seen you for a while, you know? I said afterwards, I said, we should have stopped a lot more. <laughs> I miss him. I miss him dearly. Can you remember your grandfather? You can't remember your grandfather? Well, you were born. So, so did mine, actually. What about your dad? He died at 52. Your dad died at 52. What do you remember about him? They have strong hands, they, oh, yeah. you know. He spoiled me. <laughs> spoiled you, right? Yeah. You're yeah. still that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he took care of me. He worked in New York, up at the Buffalo Chevy plant. So he was gone most of the week. So it was mother that took care of everything. And then when he had to retire early, and uh, he was there with us. But he provided for us, took care of us, and loved us. What a dad does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I miss him to this day. I don't remember my dad too much because he was, I was only three years old when my dad passed away. But uh, I thank the Lord. He 
gave me a Christian mother. And it was way back to my early days, I, I can always remember. She, she wasn't interested in men after that. She, uh, my dad worked two jobs, I guess, when he was living. We had it pretty nice, but after he passed away, my mother had it. She had it tough. But she had the Lord. And, you know, and, and she showed us love. That was more precious than gold to me. So, uh, Do you again, remember your grandfather? No. Can't remember your grandfather? No, no. Like I said, I was only three years old. So. Do you remember your dad? I do. Grandfather? Yeah. Which one do you want to talk about? Uh, let's talk about my dad. <laughs> my dad was a hard-working guy. He was a truck driver. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, he was a very respectful man. Um, it was late in his life when he found the Lord. Um, and it was actually um, his girlfriend that brought him to the Lord. Wow. Um, my mother and father separated right after I was born, so, um, yeah, it's, um, peace to know that, you know, he, he found the Lord. And, and you had a relationship with him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, he was always there. Just passed that over. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Mark still has his dad. You We're, still got your dad? Yeah, we, we all pretty much have met Chester. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's still doing good. He's down in South Carolina. And I might not have to preach. I just take all these testimonies. <laughs> I have some real fond memories of my dad. I inherited a lot of his things that uh, he taught me over the years. <clears throat> I remember some really funny things that uh, happened. Dad was a, he, he liked to go hunting and he loved fishing. So I inherited all that. But when it comes to hunting, he was a terrible shot. <laughs> he climbed up in the tree one time and uh, this big buck come running past his tree and it stopped and he he shot at it he hit it in the horn <laughs> it busted its horn he said that deer just went around circles for a little bit and then took off you know <laughs> but uh, I went with him one time. <clears throat> we were hunting turkeys, and it was he had he had a rifle. And uh, matter of fact, it was a rifle that I still hunt with. But he shot at that turkey and it took him ten minutes. It seemed like to aim on that turkey, and he missed it. You know. <laughs> And I, I've seen him shooting at deer and he missed them, you know. <laughs> so I'm shooting at a fox one time in the middle of the field. He missed it. I don't think I can remember of him ever hitting anything with that rifle. <laughs> Was he a strong man? You're a strong, you have big hands and strength. Well, did you get that from him? No. Uh, he was a little guy. He, he wasn't very, very big. Um, he was only like five foot four, you know, and <laughs> what, did he do? what was his occupation? He was a, an auto mechanic. Oh, uh, he, he, he repaired transmissions for cars and he worked on big trucks. So uh, he had your mechanical ability from him. Yeah. Uh, but I miss him a lot, you know. I just, uh, he was a humble man. He really was humble. And, uh, I wish I had those traits, but he didn't give me that. <laughs> <laughs> In the interest of time, if anybody else wants to say something about their dad or grandfather, put your hand up and I'll bring the mic. So I intimidated the rest of them. <laughs> no, I had a very loving father, too. 
you know, I was the oldest of seven kids. And I remember my dad taught me how to drive. He made me buy my own car first up. <laughs> but he took me driving. He says, no, turn right up here at this road. After I turned around, he said, oh, oh, Dan. He said, you've got to slow down before you turn. <laughs> <laughs> and he loves sports. He had, had had one game on TV watching baseball. He had a radio on his lap listening to another game at the same time. And he, he worked at the Johnstown Steel Mill. Remember, he came home from work one day, and he told us the story. His, my mom made him a meat or a lunch meat sandwich. He says the guys decided to play a trick on him. They took the lunch meat up and they put a banana skin on his sandwich. He says, I wouldn't let on to them. You know, he says, I just opened up my sandwich. He says, oh, she made me a banana skin sandwich. Great. And he ate it. <laughs> <laughs> he, had a, he had a good sense of humor, but he was very loving. And remember, I was the oldest of seven. He used to pile all of us kids in the car and take us out for ice cream pretty often. And he'd take us to drive ins. And remember one time at drive in, it was on a seesaw. And Somebody, big kid, got on the other side of the seesaw, and I went flying over his head. But my dad, he was a very loving man, and I loved him very much. You know, and he had a stroke and ended up having a heart attack pretty young, but he was a very loving father. I had really good memories of him. Well, one thing I remember about my dad, he was. Uh, in 1960, uh, a guy by the name of pastor by the name of Roscoe Sawyer uh, from Parsonville came to our home and uh, it went from a hellhole into a home. And uh, my dad was always, uh, his, his, my grandpa was a mean man and uh, my dad inherited that. And uh, he was very strict with us. You know, he, he gave you something to do, it better be done by the time he got home. And, uh, but he, he was also, uh, he, he imparted on all of us boys our love for the outdoors, for fishing and hunting. And, uh, and he didn't baby you when he took you uh, hunting or fishing. You were on your own. I mean, he, he, we'd go out hunting, he'd say, go to your deer stand, we'll see you at dark. And, uh, I guess that's why I grew up tough, but uh, anyway, he uh, he was instrumental in starting his church here, and uh, he actually was a big part of it and uh, helped get this church started, and uh, it's it's his legacy yet today, and uh, I his didn't go there. His legacy here. is you. Yeah. Um, you how you, how you live. I know, I know, I, I lived away from God till 1989, and uh, but I know, especially my mom, she prayed for me all the time. But it was a big thrill in her life when I started the church here and started serving the Lord again, and uh, that's why I want to see this church go because uh, it, uh, you know, a big part of our family and and Dewey and Shirley, they're not here today. They they were here from day one almost. And uh, it's just sad to see them. Uh, seems like they're, we, we talked about it on the way to church today, they seem to be failing, you know, and uh, especially Shirley, so keep her in your prayers. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, I, and my dad also installed in me a strong work, work ethic. If uh, it didn't involve work, my dad didn't want anything to do with it. And uh, I'll never forget, he used to, I used to work in the woods but he was an entrepreneur. He worked for himself most of his life. He had a crippled foot. His right leg, from the knee down, or from his from his thigh down, his thigh was only about as big as my shoulder, and his his calf of his leg was only as big as my wrist. And his foot was deformed. He had polio when he was a baby. But he, it never affected his work ethic. He never drew one welfare check. And uh, he, he made a living f with the big family. And, uh, but, uh, you know, he, he installed in me a good work ethic. You know, like I said, he used to, we'd work in the woods all week Thursday. He'd say, well, I'm going to give you a day off tomorrow. And he said, uh, cut the grass and do the garden. <laughs> and we, we had three lots, 50 by 150 long. Two was grass, a house set in the middle, and one was all garden. So, you know, that was my day off, so, but, uh, 
He probably thought that was easy work. Yeah, yeah, that was my day off. But uh, and I, I want Ruth to say something about her dad. He was such a great guy. I, I loved him as much, probably more than my own dad. And he he was so she good. Well, she's going to say something because <laughs> Harold Muir was a great guy. He was so good to us. And uh, my dad worked on the power lines, so he's gone all week. My mom was a dad, mm -hmm. but uh, but he retired. He took care of our grandkids. Our kids. He taught them to drive. He took them to all their appointments. He went every year to cafeteria lunch. Thought that was the greatest thing in the world. He learned to eat tacos. Uh, he was just a great guy. He gave us all the time. Yeah, he used to. Uh... He is. I was duct taping something the other day, and I said to Ruth, your dad could truck. He fixed her in with duct tape or black tape. He used to take his socks, there's a hole in them, he put black tape on. The socks he wore to our wedding had a hole in them, so he yeah. put black tape on them. And he's quite a guy. Anybody else want to say something about your dad or your grandpa? Anybody? I don't see any more hands up. Don't want to cut anybody short. Okay. Well, that was nice. I mean, we do we do want to honor our dads on Father's Day. So I thought to start with testimonies would be a good thing. Here's what it says in Matthew six nineteen to thirteen. This then is how you should pray: Our Father in heaven. Talking about Father's Day. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. When we pray that prayer, we honor our heavenly Father, God himself. He is, after all, the ultimate Father. Not all of us, as uh, not all of us, as some think that we're all God's children, but we're not. You become a child of God. But all believers can say that He's our Father. Amen. Amen. But one becomes a child of God. John one twelve. My dad was a very intelligent man. I did not inherit that. He was very artistic. He could sculpt. I did not inherit that. He was very well spoken. I did not inherit that. He was a brilliant chess player. I did not inherit that. He had a great memory. I did not inherit that. He was concerned about people. I inherited that of all the things that he had that was, would be the most valuable one to me. He didn't know how to be a dad. His father passed when he was three years old. He grew up. Uh, his mother had seven kids and one on the way when he died, when her, when her husband died, my grandfather. So the only memory my dad had of his, of his dad was he would wait at the end of the sidewalk. His dad carried mail, and he was also a photographer at a photo studio in St. Mary's. But he'd come home at the end of the day, and my dad said he would pick him up and put him in his leather mail pouch and carry him up into the house. And at three years old, that's all he could remember about his dad. But mom becomes a mom and a dad in a situation like that. And people help, the state helps, you know, and, and they get by. Unfortunately, some moms have to do both roles, and we honor them because they, they do that. They're, you know, sometimes even if they're married, some dads are duds. 
Dad has a lot of roles. <clears throat> These are things I did, helping with the infant. We brought our first son home. I, I gave him his first diaper change. I said, stand back. We'll take care of this. Because <clears throat> he had a load in his pants. And I did the first change. Right? I did. And I changed a lot of diapers after that. We had three sons. <laughs> and I used to give the babies <clears throat> and the children their bath because by the time I got home, a home, she was about ready to throw them all out. <laughs> she had about had enough. She still has hair, but... So I took over when I got home. I gave their baths, helped with feeding them and stuff like that. Sunday mornings, I got them up in the morning, even on school days, I got them up in the morning, fed them breakfast, got them dressed, packed their lunches and sent them off to school. She came down in time to kiss them all goodbye for the day. Well, there was a lot of tension and stuff, and she had, I'm not doing that, let him do it, that was me. But sometimes I had to be somewhere early with my work, so then all that was on her. But a dad is a provider. You know, dads will work more than one job if they have to, to bring home the bacon to the family. And if they need to do, to work all night, so his family will have a, a decent place to live. A dad will do that. So his family will have everything they need to be comfortable. Acts 20 and 35, in, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. A dad is a teacher. My dad taught me to sit for squirrels. My dad wouldn't take me fishing. He thought that was boring. But he took me to the place fishing. He dropped me off, and then he'd come and get me at the end of the day. He saw that I got to go fishing, but he wasn't going to do that fishing. He didn't. But you couldn't hunt without a hunting dad back in those days. And he used to like to sit for squirrels, so he taught me how to do that. He taught me how to recognize deer sign. We went hunting together, and that was the only fun that I ever had with my dad. Four years of hunting with him. Only fun I ever had with my dad. Uh, he taught me how to play chess when I was seven years old, but I always uh, lost <laughs> when I played against him anyway. He liked, he liked poetry. And he liked opera. He liked Shakespeare and things like that. He, would, he read Plato for kicks. I couldn't relate to any of that. I was never a scholar of any kind. But he did teach me to have empathy for people. Because he grew up in poverty. Eight kids and no dad. She had. <clears throat> He had a sensitivity for people who were in difficulties in life. And he tried to help. It's not enough just to feel for someone. You've got to do something about it. And that's what he taught us. He taught us that. Proverbs 1, and listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. So he did. He was a teacher. He did, and he did it by saying, look, what I'm going to do for these people. Or look what I did yesterday for these people. He wasn't boasting. He wanted us to be like him in that respect. I could never, I could never do the call. I could never do Shakespeare and all that stuff. I didn't, I really didn't work on my mother's people. They were, they were commoners. They were farmers and walkers and stuff like that. But <clears throat> my dad is a disciplinarian. I was probably over the top in that category. Our sons would probably agree. I asked our youngest son one time, I said, Josh, was I a bad dad? <laughs> he said, well, you were very strict. <laughs> Which I was, because I was fearful that they would become worldly, like I saw so many people turn to the world when they were teenagers. So, 
So I spared not the rod, but I used my hand because then I could kind of tell by the spin in my hand how much it hurt. And I didn't want to overdo that. When they were older, we used, you know, uh, you're grounded, that kind of stuff. But my sons are all decent men. <coughs> Whether in spite of me or because of me, I don't know. But I do know that I always loved my sons. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent this rebuke because the Lord's disciples, the Lord disciples those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. So a father is a disciplinarian. A dad <clears throat> settles disputes. Siblings are always going to get into disputes, banging heads with each other, fighting over, you know, when they're little, they fight over toys. When they get older, they torment each other verbally. But it seems that there is always some kind of conflict going on. So the dad is a mediator. <clears throat> figures out some kind of compromise, and on to the next problem. Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So the dads are peacemakers in the house, or at least they should be. And then Proverbs 15 and 18, a hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient, calms a quarrel. So that's an ideal of a dad should be patient and not hot-tempered. I'm not sure that I was always able to live up to that, but most of the time I think <clears throat> that I was. A dad is a judge. Sometimes dad has to get to the truth. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> you ever hear that from your kids? I didn't do it. So you want to believe them, but you have to examine the evidence. You have to hear some testimony and then decide, where were you? They were out. Why do you smell like smoke? Who were you with? Friends. <laughs> so you have to be a judge, examine the testimony, examine the evidence and decide, you know. Things are not always what they seem to be. John 7, 24, stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. A dad <clears throat> loves. Without love, everything else falls apart. Children need love. They need a, <clears throat> a mother's love and a father's love. A woman mother and a man father. Amen. Amen. And they need to be married and to each other. There isn't, you know, that's not a common goal anymore, but uh, it should be. Children have emotional needs. The love of dad and mom together supply the emotional needs. This right here is from an article written by Brad Wilcox. It's a long article. I just have an excerpt from it. It says, likewise, communities are stronger and safer when they include lots of committed married couples. It's good, then, that the share, that the share uh, of children being raised by their own married parents is on the rise. Extended kin can and sometimes must play a greater role in meeting children's needs. But as any parent knows, when it comes to an inconsolable child, even a dozen pairs of arms from the village don't compare to the warm and safe embrace of the arms of mom or of dad. And that was written by Brad Wilcox. Just a part of a large article about how children do better with a mom and a dad, and not necessarily a community. Luke 15, 20, so he got up and went to his father, but while he was still a long way off, you know what this is coming to, don't you? His father showed, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. 
He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Yeah, the love of a dad is important. That was the prodigal son. A dad prays. A dad is the example of what the child should grow up to be. We see so many moms bringing the kids to church and the dad stays home. We see a lot of that, yeah, especially in the bigger churches we've been in. What the kids see the dad do is as influential as what the dad says or <clears throat> as the church experience. I knelt by the bedside and prayed with my boys when they were little. A dad prays with his children. A dad prays for his children. Parental prayer never stops. We still pray for our kids. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Psalm 55, 22. You know, I remember when I was over at my son's house one day, my youngest son, and his little, his little boy was about maybe three years old. And he pulled himself up to the window to see his dad. And his dad was up with smoking at that time. And he was just watching his dad. His dad was outside smoking a cigarette. And he just watched and watched. And I thought, I said to my son, you know, you're teaching that kid that it's okay to smoke because his daddy does it. Yeah. And that smoke is going to destroy. He's a destroyer. And this kid, I mean, you can say you shouldn't smoke, but if I see you smoking, that's going to say something that it's okay. And not just smoking, but other things as well. So, the Bible says, I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Dad helps. Remember, remember when you fell down, Dad picked you up with his hand? Remember that? You were crying, you wiped your tears. He's going to wipe our tears in heaven, amen? amen? Human dads have faults because they're human. Some of them leave. It's tragic. Some of them are mean. I don't know which is better, though. To live in a house with a mean dad that's fight with mom all the time, or to live with mom and dad's not there. I don't know which is worse. Some are abusive. Some don't care about their children. It's tragic, and there's a lot of them. <coughs> but we have a father in heaven who will never leave us. Amen. He's always there. All we have to do is believe in him and live for him. Happy birthday, God. Our Father. Happy Father's Day. Sorry, Father's Day. God, our Father. The Lord, my great big, the Lord is my great big super daddy. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. That's my great big super daddy. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, my great big super daddy. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall fall beyond the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of my great big super daddy forever. Amen. Thanks, Dad. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God, thank you, Lord. Happy Father's Day to you, Lord. Uh, guys, I got a lot of stuff for you to pick from. <laughs>